Hey everyone, so recently I've seen a lot of questions about the mesh template generator in Blockbench um, and especially around generating UV templates for more round objects uh, since those are sometimes a bit complicated for the mesh generator to understand. So in this video I'm going to go over the details of how the template generator works on meshes, which options you can use to optimize how it works and which other ways you can use to UV unwrap your model. For demonstration purposes, I'll just use a sphere. It has faces in pretty much all directions, so it's a good way to show how it works. But of course, all of this can be applied to any type of shape. So the way the template generator works is first of all, it's gonna look for the straightest faces on the mesh. So in this case, it would be this face, for example, this one, this one, this one. And what it's going to do when it found those is it will expand from this face into all directions, into this direction, this, and then it will generate a little island of UVs. And this obviously makes a lot of sense on more straight angled meshes, like this truck, where a lot of the faces are essentially facing a certain direction. I generate a template here. It'll start on each side and form a little island ar around it, which makes a lot of sense when texturing this. But on more organic or round shapes, you might not get good results with this. And sometimes these will end up a bit uneven. That's because the shape is curved, so there's not really a way to make it directly straight without stretching pixels. So for example, you can see these faces are a bit at an angle. Okay, there's a couple of ways you can affect how a UV is generated and first of all there are these two options in the template generator so first of all there's the edge angle threshold and it's by default 36 and that's essentially the angle between two of these faces where it will still connect them to an island so for example between these two faces if it starts here and the angle to the next edge is smaller than 36 it'll consider adding this face to the island. The next value is the island angle threshold. And that's essentially the angle between the origin face of the island and the farthest out face. So for example, when it starts here and it gets to this face, and this is more than uh, 45 degrees away from this, um, it'll stop generating the island. And that's what you can see with the default value is it'll stop here. And if I, for example, set this to full 360, oh, 360, now it's gonna generate a template for the whole sphere wrapping around everywhere. So that's already a way you can make your um, faces and your pixels more straight, depending on how you want to map them. As you can see at the top, it's like this now, which may be what you're looking for. Um, but there are also other ways to affect how it's generated. Uh, so for example, let's remove this again. And if we change the edge angle threshold to something like one, then it won't connect any faces anymore because the angles are all too large. So now each face will get its, its own little UV island. And what this means is that um, on the mesh edges, you'll get sharp edges between your pixels. So that might also be cool. Um, another thing you can do is use a seam tool. So let's get rid of this again and select the seam tool. And what the seam tool is essentially does is you can select an edge and you can select between three different modes for how to handle the seam in the template generator. Um, so auto is a default and that's what we've seen so far where it uses the face angle to determine whether to connect it to the island. Um, but you can set it to divide and it'll color it orange. And now these two faces will never connect to each other. Or you could also set it to join and then it'll always try to connect these two faces and these two faces. You can hold Alt to select an entire loop around something 
Um, and by the way, I'm going to use a couple short keys. Uh, you can always see which uh, keys I'm pressing down here. For actions, you can see um, here in the middle, and you can see my mouse keys here. Um, so I'm just going to select a couple of these and set all of them to divide. Okay, now these are all divided, sort of like orange slices. And now what you can do is switch back to default tool. And if we set the island threshold to larger number, now we'll get these sort of slices, which could also be an interesting way to generate UVs. Um, and you cannot only do this horizontally, so you could also do it vertically, like Let's undo all of these. You could select these loops and set all of, all of these to divide. And now, if we increase this number, what we'll get is these types of uh, ring UVs. Of course, what you can also always do is manually edit the UV. So if I generate a template for this one, and for example, I wanted this face to be straight. What I can do is zoom in in the UV editor, and there are always two tools to modify your faces. Here at the top, at the top there is the rotate tool, which you can use to make it straight, essentially. Now you can move it somewhere here, and now the pixels are fairly straight. Um, but what I could also do is if I, for example, wanted to connect it to the red part here, check out, okay, where's the red part? Okay, up here. Uh, don't have space up here, so I'm gonna enable move texture with, with UV and drag it somewhere down here. Oh, maybe a little more. What I can do now is uh, disable this and grab this one, and then hold control and click this one and right click connect UV faces. And now it's straight up connected to this face. So another technique for UV mapping that might be useful for you, especially if you want to texture a relatively large uh, section on your model in sort of one connected area is um, projection from view. So currently in uh, May 2023, you'll need a plugin for this. Um, later it might be integrated into Blockbench. Uh, so what we'll do is just select a couple of these faces and what we'll need is a plugin. So go to File, Plugins uh, and install mTools. Okay. And now you can uh, use the Orbit Gizmo and click on one of the sides so that you see it in a sort of frontal view. And right click mTools, UV mapping, project from view. And this will sort of project what you can see in the viewport onto your UV map. Um, this is a bit too large, so what we can do is zoom out here and just do it again. Now it's a bit smaller. What we can also, of course, do is scale it here. Let's hold Alt to lock the aspect ratio, and you can hold Control to disable snapping. Um, this looks about right, so let mo let's move that somewhere here. And uh, now we can use the paint bucket to fill in the area. And we can go ahead and paint. So of course the issue with this is the further away the edges are and the more they are at an angle, the more distorted your, your V will be. So for example, if I draw something on here from this angle, it'll look correct. But if you look from the side, it's a bit stretched. So in certain situations, this might be useful. This may be what you're looking for. In others, maybe not. I just recommend to play around with it and see what works best for your model.